All right, today what I'm going to go over is how to squat properly, or I should say specifically three really important cues that have helped me personally squat better and get into a better position in the squat. And some of these ideas you may use, maybe you've used them in the past, maybe you forgot about them, and I hope that maybe you can take these ideas that I'm sharing with you and implement them in your own workouts and your own squatting sessions. And also, if you, uh, if you coach anybody, if you're a personal trainer or a fitness instructor, you can help people squat better. So the first things first, we want to make sure we prioritize spinal stability, proper uh, braced abdomen. You want to make sure that you're not trying to fault the spine. And this is kind of going to go into discussion with um, the butt wink and why the butt wink is essentially bad under heavy loads. Under light loads, it's okay, it's fine. But understand that when you have a very braced abs and your core is tight, your core, your spine, your spine is, is prioritized and that's what you want. You want to prioritize your spine. So with that said, the first cue that I learned that's helped me significantly is a cue from Kelly Starrett. He talks about turning, screwing your feet into the ground and pushing your knees out. One quick note about this is that you don't want to screw your feet into the ground so hard and exaggerated that you're essentially creating this excessive knee out position because what will end up happening in some people, it's going to end up causing a lot of a knee irritation on the lateral side. It just depends on the individual. So it's important that you know who you are and you know what your flexibility issues are because each individual is a little different. But as you begin to get lower into the squat and lower your body, that torque is really important. Being able to create that external rotation torque with the hips allows for your body to stay upright. Now with the, bra with the stomach engaged and you squat with the braced, braced abdomen with the knees out, you're able to stay in a much more upright position. And this allows for a good position in the squat. So understand that allows your hips to be engaged more. This is kind of why also that it's important that your feet are straight. Uh, straight, usually 5 to 15 degrees. I think 15 degrees might be too much, but I say that much because it really kind of depends on the individual because some people are lacking a lot of dorsiflexion. They don't have good ankle range of motion. And when you don't have good ankle range of motion, what's going to end up happening is you begin to squat, the knees don't, they come out, and if you don't have good ankle range, what will end up happening is your heels will come up. That's sort of the biggest problem there. A lot of the time people have issues with the inner thighs, piriformis, not having good hip flexibility. But the thing is, is that what's interesting is that you can strengthen and work around those things. The ankles are pretty stiff. The ankles are much more stiffer tissue and they're a little bit harder to change in my experience. Uh, number two is from Johnny Candido. He has this really cool idea where he mentions, uh, he has this kind of little debate on YouTube between, uh, talking about how Mark Ripito's uh, guidance on the squat is incorrect. And one of the things that, that um, Mark Ripito talks about with the squat is that in the video, I'll link in the description along with Johnny Candido's, is that when the butt comes back and you go into a squat, the, heel, the weight goes in the heels, right? The problem in this position here is that you're, how can I say? You're just placing your weight in your heels so that you get hamstrings and glutes. You want to get most, as much posterior chain, as poss posterior chain activation as possible. Now what Johnny Candido, Candido, Johnny Candido suggests is that you use your hip flexors to pull yourself down into the, in the bottom. This is actually a pretty good cue for me. And I think it's a cue for mostly advanced people in my opinion, and I'll explain why in just a second. So as I brace my abs, I turn my feet out, or turn my, you get the external rotation torque and, and screwing my feet into the ground. As I lower my body, brace my abs, drop my butt, into position, use my, use my hip flexors to pull myself down into a squat and then come back up. That allows for essentially the ideal pelvic position to pull yourself down. The only drawback with that cue is that it doesn't work for everybody for a simple fact that for a lot of beginners, I'm talking about like really, really beginners that don't know their, what hip flexors are, who don't know how to use their hips, are going to end up not understanding what that means. And, they will, and what they will probably end up doing, as I can tell, is they would end up, when they get to here, trying to pull their hip flexors down, they're going to end up pulling themselves into hyperextension, which is going to be really bad. And so it's actually, so for a lot of beginners, it's actually a lot better, like Mark Ripito says, in my opinion, to have their butt come back more and sit on the heels and sit the butt back for the simple reason that you get them to use more of their hamstrings and glutes, because a lot of people have a tendency to have um, two things. One, really tight, tight bottom, everything's tight. Muscles at the bottom are very tight, hamstrings are tight, ankles are tight. But you take away from them using so much of their quads. Because what ends up happening when people have tight ankles, tight calves, is they end up having to use more of their quadriceps, and then they get this, basically the thighs begin to burn and not enough of their hamstrings and glutes. But that particular cue, using your hip flexors to pull your, your body down into the hole, has been very helpful to me, because it allows me to get the right position 
And actually one of the main things that actually helps me with is that when I squat and I use my hip flexors to lower my body down, I'm able to get more knee forward position. So that way it cues me to go straight down instead of going back and then back forward and in. And again, this is specifically for me, may or may not work for you. And then number three, Justin Thacker, uh, Olympic, uh, Olympian, uh, been to the Olympics multiple times, Olympic weightlifter. And uh, I listened to this podcast on Barbell Shrugged. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description as well about how he talks about having a kind of a, I forgot who he credits about who taught him this or t mentioned it to him. It's kind of having pawing the ground, like your feet are like paws and you're trying to grip the ground like your hands. And what this does allows for a stable foot position. One of the first things that he said that he learned, he's, is that he was able, that he, one of the biggest things that he learned in his squatting was being able to essentially feel your toes and feel the ground. And, what, and, having, having, and the importance of having a very stable foot position, because a lot of people don't have a good stable foot position, and that stable foot position essentially is what connects you to the ground. And with many people, when they squat, you know, like what with, with uh, Mark Riveto talks about, you know, dropping your hip, sticking your butt back and going into your heels. And sometimes when people don't have good dorsiflexion, their toes will come off the ground like this. And when their toes come off the ground, you don't have a stable hip position. So one of the things, if you think about what Johnny Candido says about using your hip flexors to pull yourself down, that allows for your weight to be centered more into your, the middle of your foot. Combine that with what Kelly Starrett says about creating external rotation torque at the hips, using the hips to, pull your, to make space for your hips to drop down into the bottom, and then using your hip flexors, like Johnny Candido says, to push your hips down and then using your feet to kind of grab the ground, you'll be able to get a much, much stable squat position. Unfortunately though, because of my lack of ankle range of motion, you might be able to see that there's a little bit of uh, space here at the bottom of my heels. Now if I'm in a front squat position here, I'm actually not too bad. And if I have Olympic weightlifting shoes, I can kind of deal with that shortcoming. So you can see that, that's actually not too bad. Anyways, these are just some ideas and it's connecting some of the dots of kind of how I've improved my squatting and how I've rebuilt my squat. My best competition squat is 429. Nothing world class by any means, but for me it's, when there's you know 375 or more on the bar, it makes me nervous and I have to get underneath it. And being able to know, how being able to squat pain free is really important for me. One of the things I've been struggling with in my own squatting is I've been getting some tendonitis in this knee. Uh, it will shoot like a little shock sensation, and a lot of that has to do with overuse. A lot of different multi, a lot of different factors. I also kind of mildly injured this knee mildly, uh, trying to front squat too much weight or too often because of that lack of dorsiflexion. Because if I go into a squat and I don't have good dorsiflexion, I'm gonna have I have no way to go. If I go to the bottom, there's only one place to go, and that's to go in. If you see some people squat, their knees will buckle in. So, anyways, those are just some ideas and thoughts. Hopefully you can use these ideas in your own squatting, coaching, or your own personal use. Uh, if you liked this video and it helped you out, please click like. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And thanks for watching.